Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Beyond Monkeys 2 series. In the introduction earlier, I showed you the application that we are going to build. It is a mobile version of the snippets website which is being maintained by Gerald and uh, Steven. It allows you to display in a nice way or, or see all the different community submissions related to Xamarin and .NET MAUI and you can actually go to the github repos directly from there and and download the code and play with it so i spoke about all the functionality of this application in the previous video in the introduction if you have missed that uh, please have a look at that in this part what we are going to do we are going to build a backend api for this mobile application that we will be building from next video onwards as i mentioned previously ideally this data should have come directly from snippets.dev website but unfortunately it is not available there so i had to build a logic to extract this information store it in sql server and then present it uh, you through my own uh, web apis using an asp.net uh, web api 6 application so this is the application that we will be we will be building in this part so to start with the very first thing we need is we need to have a database for our backend so for the purpose of development i am using uh, docker sql server 2019 running in docker what i have done is i have created a simple database called SNPPTS underscore DB. This is the name of database and it has got just four tables. The list of authors, the list of snippets, the categories each snippet belongs to and the images, additional images for each of the snippet. So I will be sharing the full code for this database script with you uh, uh, via GitHub. In fact, let me show it to you. I will post the link to this in the video description. So this whole file that you're seeing on the screen, it is already uploaded to my Mavi samples slash Mavi dot snippets uh, folder on the GitHub. You can download it and you can run it against your own SQL server yourself. For the purpose of this demo, just to show it to you, I am running it against my local SQL server. Of course, for production, I have already run this. I have a SQL server running on the internet in, in Azure, which is over here. So it is a database which is running on Microsoft Azure. I have deployed this database over there. So I'm creating a simple table called snippet, which has a few fields, uh, the slug, the title, description, whether it has Android, iOS, UWP sample, uh, what it is built with, uh, uh, Xamarin or, or Maui, uh, URL, GitHub URI, uh, the author's GitHub uh, URI or handle, number of GitHub stars, last updated date, and so on. And then we have a table for snippet images, which has the, the images for each of these snippets. We have the categories for each of the snippet and the, the, the information about the authors. What is the first name, last name, website, Twitter handle, uh, uh, Gavatar hash for each of the authors. And then I have created another stored procedure, which I will come to in a little while. Let me let me not go over there. So I've already created this database. And if I run this just to show you, let me show it to you in action. So what I did is I just did a select star from snippet. Right now you can see there is no data in, in any of these four tables. So all these four tables are currently empty. So <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so where do we get the data into these tables? Because at the end of the day, data has to come in. The data is currently available. If you go to the snippets.dev website, it is sourcing the data from uh, its GitHub repo, which is uh, SNPPTS. Yeah, here. So github.com snippets dev slash snippets. All the information is coming over here. And as I was mentioned last mentioning last time, I actually submitted a pull request to 
add API capabilities to this uh, platform, but unfortunately, uh, there was no response from the developers. So I had to somehow extract this data and store it in this database. Right now, as you see, this database is empty. So how do I get this information out? So I did some research. I studied the whole source code of how this information is being extracted and presented. And by the way, luckily for me, at least in this particular case, all the information is stored in this source folder for all the authors, for all the snippets. So I actually went about creating another AWS Lambda function. So again, it's a, it's a piece of a .NET code, which I am running it or deployed it to AWS Lambdas. It is running every two hours, I believe. I have scheduled it to run uh, every two hours. What it does, it goes, looks into this source code folder, the snippets folder, especially the authors, as well as the snippets. So these two folders, let me open up say authors folder. So it gets, it reads actually each of the files and then doing some compilation or compiler magic, it extracts the information out of each of these classes and then I am injecting that data into this database. So this whole exercise I have done as a .NET application running as an AWS Lambda function. Now I am not going to show how I have done that. That is not related to this to the .NET MAUI uh, platform or related to this. It is a separate video <clears throat> on its own. If you are interested, let me know. I'll be happy to make a video how I went about reading the information from this website, each of the classes, dynamically compiling it, and then pushing this information into this SQL Server database, the one that you see over here at the moment, which is empty. So coming back to this, right now, this is empty. What I have also done is I have created another stored procedure. Just to let you know, I am just going to execute this stored procedure. It is a very simple sort procedure. All it is returning is all this information that you see on the screen or in these four tables with some data massaging and some data joins. It is, it is doing some extra work, but since there is no data right now, it is coming out empty. For the purpose of this demo, I extracted all the information which I am pushing from the AWS Lambda into my production desktop. Uh, sorry, uh, to, to a production SQL server. I have extracted all the information and I have generated the insert scripts for you. So let me actually go ahead and execute these insert statements. Let me just push the data. Now, once the data is pushed, let me show you if I run these select statements again, say, let's say, have a look at select star from authors. If I run the authors, we have all these authors over here, which has are around 63 authors. So you can see uh, Andreas Nisham, uh, this is his website, uh, this is his GitHub handle, this is his Gavatar hash. If I go to, let's say, snippets, let me execute snippets. These are the different snippets. There is one, say, the, the betting application. This is the slug, the name, the description. It is It has Android sample. It does not have iOS or, or UWP sample. Uh, it is built using Xamarin. Uh, this is the, the GitHub URL. This is the author, which we will find it in the authors table. How many stars are there? What is the last update date and so on. So I have pushed this data. Now, if I execute the same stored procedure, the one I showed you, let me execute this stored procedure. It is going to return you a few rec record sets. Let me show over here. So the first record set it is going to send you is the list of all the authors. So GitHub handle, first name, last name, website, Twitter handle, Gavatar hash. Second record set is going to be list of all the snippets. Third one is going to be list of all the images. And the last or the fourth record set is going to be list of all the, uh, the categories that a snippet belongs to. For example, this add credit card snippet, it belongs to shopping cart and stores. If we go over here, we can, sorry, we can find that over here, the add credit card. This is this is the snippet we are talking about. So this this Excel, this sorry, this database SQL file I am sharing with you so you can get the same file and you can run it against your own 
SQL Server database for development purposes or you can deploy it to the cloud if you want to. In my case, the actual production one is running in, in Microsoft Azure and there is an AWS Lambda which is populating this data on a every two hour basis. So this is the backend part. Once we have the database, then we can start building a web API around it. And please note that this stored procedure is the key which returns these four record sets. This is the stored procedure we will be calling because I don't want to make four API calls to, or sorry, four database calls to my database, fetch the data. In fact, I have written one stored procedure which is returning all this data in one go and then I am uh, uh, sending it back uh, as JSON response which my mobile application can consume. The mobile application that we will start building from uh, uh, next session onwards. Okay, so this web API, the one that we will start building now, by the way, again, I have built a production one and I have deployed that to uh, uh, my production site. I am not going to disclose the name. Last time I made a mistake, especially around uh, the, the YouTube tube player application. I, by mistake, put in my, my own API key in there and then that, that key got blocked because everyone just, you know, uh, uh, cloned the, the, the GitHub repo, started running it. People may have started using it for other purposes as well. So that, that key got blocked. So this time around, I have, I'm not disclosing my production web server because anyways, there are some other confidential or other critical things running on my web server. This, this API is just one part of that web server. So I will not be disclosing that. So let us go and start building a web API project. So I'm going to do it from scratch. Let's, let's start a web API project. So web and console web ap application API. So we will create a web API application. Do we have another option? So let's say continue. I'm going to use .NET 6. If you are very adventurous, you can go ahead and you can use .NET 7 as well. It has been G8, uh, generally available as of 9th of November. So you can go ahead and use it. Uh, I am going to use controller, so I'm going to keep it checked. I am not going to use open API support. So, and we yes, we can configure it for HTTPS. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this project as uh, SNPPTS underscore API and I'm going to save it. Just, just create this project. It is going to be a simple web project, a web API project. So here the project has been created. Nothing fancy in it. This is the default project which is created. It has a program.cs file which has some setup and then it has a controller which is weather forecast con controller and it is returning some dummy data. Let me run this just to show it to you how it is running. So let us run this first thing when it launches. Okay, it is not asking me for HTTPS certificate. So you can see over here, this is the URL. And now this is the the JSON output that we got out of it. Wonderful. So this is working fine. In fact, we will not be needing this weather forecast controller at all. So I can get rid of it altogether. And instead, what we will be doing it we will be needing uh, our own snippets controller. So we will add our own controller. So let me add a new file and I am going to go to ASP.NET Core. Where is my API controller? Web API controller class and let me call it SNPPTS controller. Okay, so here we go. We have our own controller that we will be working with. So nothing is needed. We will we'll build this ourselves. So what about the route? So the way we want to expose it, we don't want to expose it with API slash SNPPTS or, or yeah, SNPPTS in this particular case. I want to make it, uh, you know, extendable in future. So maybe we can change it to either hard coded or we can leave the controller. Uh, I will, I, I, I like to use specific uh, names for my, 
purpose is so I am going to say it's version 1.0 so this is the route for our API and this is the controller now before we do that let's have a look at our builder file so what we are doing over here we nothing fancy I'm not going to change anything there is one thing which I will do at a later stage not now I will show that to you but for the time being I'm, I'm going to leave it empty one important thing to note over here this is not a course or not a tutorial for building uh, efficient web API applications or web APIs so I'm not going to focus on uh, response caching or response compression or authorization or, or uh, you know in memory caching or, or you know redis distributed caching uh, or, or encryption uh, etc etc in my production version I have done all of those but here for simplicity purposes I am not going to do anything I'm just going to leave it as such All right, so let's go and start building our controller. So this is where the meat of the, the API logic is going to be. Let me clean it up. Now, before we start, uh, we are going to be connecting to this database, the one we were talking about. So you could see over here, we had four result sets coming out of it. So for example, the first result set was author. So it has GitHub handle, first name, last name, website, Twitter handle, Gavatar hash. The second result set is the snippet, which has the slug, the title, description, and so on. So we need to connect to database. Now, for those of you who have worked with SQL databases or database or built database applications, you would realize it is quite a painful task if you are using the default uh, way or the built-in way in, in Microsoft, or you can use something called Entity Framework or EF Core to make your life easier. Uh, in my particular case, I am going to rely on uh, a helper project which I have written myself. Uh, let me actually show that to you. See if we can pull it up. Not this one. It is again an open source project. Yeah, DB helpers. So this is again an open source project which allows you to very easily execute any SQL commands or SQL stored procedures without writing much of the code. For example, in the old way, you had to write a lot of this code and now you can do it just with one line. So this is what this library will help you with. So let me actually go ahead before we start and I'm going to go to uh, add the NuGet package. So I'm going to search for xgeno.db helpers and I'm going to add the version 1.0.0 package. That is the first thing I'm going to do. Now the next thing that we need to do if we go back to our, okay, it is asking us to accept. Yes, I'm going to accept and add all the related packages so it is result, returning four result sets each of the result sets have a structure for example the author has one two three four five six fields so we actually need to create these models as well so let me go ahead and create a new folder called models and in this i'm going to add some classes for example i'm going to add a class called SNPPTS, let's call it author, a simple class, let me make it a minimal API and we could see there are one, two, three, four, five, six fields, GitHub handle is a string, 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 in this case all of these are strings, so let me go ahead and create these, I can go and remove the constructor and create six properties github handle first name last name website twitter handle gavatar hash right this is the author class 
The second class I have is snippets category. So let me actually go and add a new class snippets category. Same thing, I'm going to clean it up. And this snippets category, if we go back, snippets category has two fields, which is the slug and the category. So I can go ahead and define these. So we have the slug and the category. Similarly, I'm going to define my other ones, other classes. snippets image and I made a small mistake in this snippets category it should be under the models so let me go ahead and fix it from fix the namespace of it so they all go into this and the last one I'm going to create is the actual snippets class And this snippet class has a lot of fields. The snippets class has a lot of fields. So what you see over here, the fields at the top, these are the fields which are coming from the database. But you see there are two fields which I've defined, the categories and the images these categories and images are not coming from the database result. I will explain what I'm doing over there for these because all of these images are coming or categories are coming in a different table. So you see there is, if I look at the add credit card snippet, it has three images which, which are coming out and it has two categories which have been defined for it. They are coming as separate result sets, but I do not want to send all this information separately and do do this computation on the on the front end which is my mobile application so rather i will do it over here i'll consolidate it as a list of categories and list of images in in this main snippet itself and that is what i will send so these are my four data models now addition to the data models there is also another data model that we will create which we will use to send our result back i will explain that in a while so for the time being, I'm going to leave it. Let's go back to our controllers. So we have defined our controller. It has a route, okay? And all it is going to do is, first of all, we need to define a, an HTTP get method to return the data. Okay, so So we have just created a HTTP get method called snippets, which we can call our server name slash API slash snippets slash v1.0 v slash snippets. And it is going to return us some JSON data. I'm calling this get all snippets. Right now it is giving us an error because it is not returning anything. To, to fix this error, I can simply say return okay. And we are done with this error. So what are we going to do in, in this uh, API controller? We are going to talk to our database using the library that we just uh, spoke about, DB helpers. We are going to get the data and we are going to return the result. So to start with, let me define my database connection string. Since I'm running it on, let's take it to the second line since i am running it on my docker local database i don't mind sharing the password this is not something i'm using in my production you can see this is local host the database name is snpps underscore db uh, the username is navid for my database and this is my password this is my <coughs> uh, connection string now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to 
start coding this so we said just return ok instead what we will be doing i will be i'll be returning ok but the actual result coming from database so i'm I, i'm going to create a new snippet a, a new function or a new method called get snippets from database which is going to return the json the sorry the database output which we are going to return and the moment i put it in ok it is going to send it as a json response and in case if there is an exception instead of returning ok i can return status code of type 500 you know snippets api just giving it a message saying a problem happened please try back later so that's that's all we need to do now what is this get snippets from database function what i am going to do in the interest of time rather than to bore you i am going to just copy paste a bit of code or this whole method and then i'm going to explain what is happening in this function uh, ignore this for now i will come back to this a little bit later right now it is giving you an error because remember i was telling you there is another class that we need to define which we have not so we we are going to define that uh, let's do something let's make it a bit cleaner remove these extra curly braces so this is returning a uh, an object of type snppts result which we have not defined just to fix this error we can go ahead and we can define this but we will not put anything over there yet so snippets result so I have to put it here leaving it empty coming back to my controller so now this error has disappeared so what are we doing so first of all we are creating the the result set variable this is where we are going to send the data out using json so i'm just creating a new instance of snippet results a variable which has nothing in it at the moment you can also see this the snippet result is empty so coming back what are we doing so first thing we have to do we have to open a database connection so i'm just opening a sql database connection using this database con database connection string which i defined up here so i'm just creating a connection database connection and then i'm opening this connection once i have opened this connection now what i'm going to do i'm going to execute this record set to get the data from database so let's see let's bring in our dependencies the the using statements the extension method so it is an extension method that i have written as part of as part of this library the one i was showing you a while ago it's all open source you can go you can play with it you want to read more about it especially for those of you who are doing a lot of database programming against sql server you will really appreciate how quick and easy it makes it for you rather than writing you know tens or hundreds of lines of code you can do that in literally just one or two lines as simple as that so all i'm doing i'm just executing this stored procedure and this is the stored procedure name if you remember the stored procedure name was sp underscore get all snippets so i go back this is the stored procedure i'm calling and the extension method this time i'm calling is execute multi result stored procedure because this stored procedure is returning four different result sets that is the reason i'm calling multi result stored procedures and once i have got the result back i am assigning the result the output to this variable that i have declared now at the moment i have not added anything over there so let me actually go and fix because we do not want to return everything to to the to for as the response because we have the images we have the categories if you remember coming out of the sort procedure we don't want to send them separately in fact if you recall i created these two lists which we will be populating and within the snippet itself it will have the categories and the images so coming back over here right now if you look at the images all the images are coming in around around uh, you know 1047 rows are coming in one result set but only three images belong to this credit card snippet so this is what we will do in this images we will have only these three images 
which are returned as part of the credit card that is what we will be doing so what i am doing once i have declared this i am saying for my snippet results dot authors and this i have defined it as a list of authors and list of snippets so i am assigning all my authors as the result of the first data set so if we come back to our output if you come back to the output the first result set if you notice is the authors second result set is the uh, snippets third is images and the fourth result set is the categories so the first one is the authors so coming back over here so first time when i say read it is going to give me the output of the first one and it is automatically going to return a list of authors i'm just telling it map it to the class which is snppts authors let's go back to this class author you remember we defined it in this case with the same names as the database output let's go back over here for the authors we defined it with the same names github handle first name last name website twitter handle and so on so it automatically maps it and then converts it into a list and sends the result back if you wanted to change the names over here not the same you can go ahead and read this blog post here i am mentioning how you can change the names if you want to define it in a different way you can do that but that is not our our purpose in this this one so yeah i'm assigning it to the list of authors i'm assigning the list of snippets which is the second result set so the moment i say read again on this variable on this result set it is going to read the second one so first and second are read now third one you remember what the image is now for images this is what i am doing i'm i'm reading these images into a local variable called image list and the fourth one i am reading which is the categories into a local variable called categories list and this one is you can see over here it is a list of snippet categories the image list this is the list of snippet images once i have this and then i am checking for each snippet in this snippets that i got all i am going i am iterating through this image list the one that i got uh, the one if you remember i showed you 1047 rows and i am saying the for the first one which is add credit card from all these 1047 rows get me only the rows where the the slug is add credit card so if we go back over here so you can see the slug this is the one that uniquely identifies a, a snippet and then similarly for the images each of them are tagged to these slugs so i'm saying based on this slug get me all these images and then create a list of images from this slug so at the end of the day for the credit card this snippet dot images the one that we created over here these additional variables additional lists they will have these uh, uh, three images similarly for the categories it will only have those two categories the one you saw once i am done i'm just saying database correction close and return this snippet result and this snippet result i am returning it as an okay result that's all i need to do so my api is ready let me actually run this and show it to you in action so let us run this api and now it is giving me an error because of course the weather forecast is not there we deleted this in fact we re replace that with this this one right slash snippets let me execute and you can see this is the json output that we are getting out of it so let me show it to you a little bit pretty way so there is a website called json pretty let's go to json pretty i'm just going to copy paste this json output right and make pretty so you can see this is what we get out of it so we have the list of authors right so there are different authors all these 63 authors are coming here and for each of the author what do you see you see github handle first name last name website twitter handle gavatar hash and so on right S similarly the second result set by the way it only has two result sets the second one is a list of snippets 
so the snippet has slug title description built with external uri github uri etc etc and you see over here it has this categories which is a list so it has two categories shopping cart and stores and it also has a list of images which is three images which has three image uris so that is what we have done now one thing you will notice not a problem per se but what will happen is the moment we start using it you will you may have seen me or or maybe any other application uh, especially on on the front end side let's say dotnet mavi application the moment we take this output let me show it to you so if i say quick type dot io because we will need to convert this json response into active uh, .NET classes that we can make use of so let me actually go ahead and paste it and i am going to convert it to c sharp yes i am going to convert it to c sharp and i am going to return it as a list and and you see over here what it has done so it has added this json property so the data came up as let's come back over here uh, where is my output yeah the data came up as authors with small a and snippets as small s so sorry so it has mapped it to pascal case over here so the data came in camel case it mapped it to pascal case because that is what we are used to and it added this property right and what we want to do is and similarly if you look at the authors for example same github handle it mapped it to if i open any of the authors github handle with a small g pass camel case it converted it to the pascal case this is what we are used to but this to me looks a bit ugly ideally what should happen is uh, okay this does not have this option so let me go json to c sharp just on to c sharp let me copy paste this whole thing paste it over here convert right so right now you see if i don't tick anything it is creating it with the same camel case so without defining these properties which is fine but usually we want to use pascal case and then instead of using G uh, newton soft json i am going to use uh, the asp.net or .net core a version of json deserializer so you can see it added all these json property names with github handle and so on correct unnecessary it is going to mess up the readability of my code so wouldn't it be better if i do not have these properties so i get the output like so let me untick this convert so wouldn't it be better if i get the output like this when i use it in my dot and mavi application but all of these are pascal case and we can see in our database actually they are coming in pascal case they are coming correctly so in this particular one the the authors let's see so you can see github handle first name everything is coming correctly so how we can fix this this is again something which is very easy to do i can go to my program cs and when so the place where i am adding my all i need to do is i need to add some mvc options so i'm going to add some mvc options and uh, in fact let's keep it simple add mvc and now i am adding json options all i am telling it that for the serialization option use the use don't use any property naming policy by default it uses the camel casing policy that's where it is converting even the correct names which are coming from database or coming from our mo models over here if i go back to my author you see it is correctly defined as 
G capital, F capital and so on. But it uses the camel uh, policy and it converts it to camel casing. So I'm saying don't use this camel casing policy. Instead, let me let me go back. And now if I run this and we go back over here, return, run. And you see now it has come back with clean name. So if I delete this, paste it, make pretty. So here you go. See, everything is now coming cleanly. I can now take this code, put it in in, in JSON to C sharp without any anything else and I have clean output. So this is the this is the web API project that we have created. Now what I will do just to uh, I, I will add this project as well into the GitHub repo. I will link to that in the description below. You can have a look at that. So this is part two where we are building the, the web API or we have built the web API backend. In my case, I have published it to uh, my SQL server on Azure. I have published the API on my website online. Uh, but for your purposes, I would recommend, since I'm not going to share my server name with you, I would recommend that you run this in your development environment yourself. If you are using Windows, it is very straightforward. You can install SQL Server Express Edition and, and you can run it. You can build this API, the code that I will share, you can run it. If you, if you are on a Mac, you can use Docker to run a, a SQL Server uh, Edge version or SQL Server 2019, depending on if you are using M1, M2 or or the older older Intel models. And once you have the API, you will be good to start on part three, which is building the actual, or we, where we will start building the actual .NET MAUI application. So yeah, that's it for now. Stay tuned. If you like this video and you want to see more coming on .NET MAUI, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, I am on vacation these days for next three, four days. So I will try to complete this whole video series in next three, four days itself. I am anticipating around eight, nine, 10, 12, depending on you know how much work is there. Uh, so we will be building this whole application from scratch. See you everyone.